happy Sabbath, happy day. Uh, welcome to this session. My name is Dr. Mandela Ogada. I work at the International Cancer Institute as a clinical research oncology pharmacist. So this morning, I just want us to share some nuggets on uh, what we can do to close the cancer care gap. Uh, let us pray before we begin. Our Heavenly Father, we glorify your name this morning. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here as your children and to uh, listen from you and to fellowship together with our brethren. As we begin to share these nuggets, how we pray that you may give us clarity of thought and you may help us to uh, even implement them in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, for the sake of those who are seeing me for the first time, I'm not new here. I've been visiting this church since the year 2014, whenever I'm in Nairobi. And I can see so many familiar faces also. So uh, let's begin from the basics. What is cancer? Someone might ask what cancer is. So it's a group of over 100 diseases which have one thing in common, and that is uh, in cancer, some of the body cells become abnormal and they grow uncontrollably, and then they sometimes decide to spread to other parts of the body. You, you see, normally the body has the ability to control the growth of cells, and also it has the ab ability to tell cells when to die, because the cells of the body cannot live forever. But what happens in cancer is that sometimes uh, some of these cells defy the body's uh, signals telling them to die, and sometimes they grow uh, in the absence of signals telling them to grow. And that is uh, a major challenge. In case uh, you are writing notes, don't worry if I move too fast because my notes will be shared with you. And you will see uh, some of the reasons. There are five reasons uh, why we term cancer cells as abnormal. So uh, today let us look at the good news there's good news about cancer, the bad news, yeah, and also the gaps that exist, then we can see how we can close these gaps. So the bad news is that cancer is real. And just to uh, put uh, some figures to it, in the year 2020, nearly 10 million people died across the world, and those people succumbed to cancer. And out of this 10 million, 7.5 million were from uh, low and middle income countries like Kenya. So there are two reasons that contributed to this, and I want us to remember these reasons because uh, they will contribute uh, immensely to what we'll discuss at the end. It's because these countries are inadequately prepared to tackle non communicable diseases. And the second reason is inadequate awareness of cancer among citizens of these countries. And uh, to bring it home, in the year 2020, global uh, estimates indicate that uh, more than 42,000 Kenyans were diagnosed with cancer. That same year, 27,092 Kenyans succumbed to the disease. That is bad news, right? But again, on the flip side, there's good news that out of the 42,000, if you look at it in a simplistic manner, you realize that if 42,000 people were sick that year and only 27 died, 27,000 died, then it means we have a good news that there's survivorship, yeah? There's high survivor uh, rate. That is, you can see that more than 15,000 people uh, survived that year. So cancer is the third leading cause of premature death in Kenya. Premature death is described as any death of someone below the age of 69 years. And uh, here's what uh, Dr. Tedros, uh, who is the Director General of WHO, had to say about cancer 
which we might all agree with him, that cancer exerts a tremendous physical, emotional, and financial strain on individuals, families, communities, and health systems, and even countries. And uh, cancer is also now a significant impediment to the realization of sustainable development goals, especially goal number 3.4, that seeks to reduce the mortality, uh, premature mortality, by 33% by the year 2030. But with the scourge of cancer continuing, uh, we might face a difficult uh, time meeting these targets. But uh, uh, when we see what we can do to close the gap, then we can achieve these targets. And just to mention, uh, in the year 2020, breast cancer was the leading uh, in terms of prevalence. That was uh, more than 6,000 Kenyans were diagnosed with breast cancer that year. It was followed by cervical cancer. Uh, but uh, on a sad note, cervical cancer uh, was the leading cause of death, of cancer-related death, that is. So it is also projected that the number of uh, cases will increase steadily, that is, if we don't do anything about it, right? It will continue increasing. And by the year 2020, it is estimated that cancers of the breast will rise to 14,700, of cervix uh, will rise to 11,200, and of prostate to 9,600. But if we do something about it, we can reverse this or reduce the, the rate. But there's also so much good news about cancer, as I had alluded before. Number one is that cancer is not a death sentence, right? It is not a de death sentence, and here is the reason why. Today, there's a much better understanding of cancer among professionals than we, we did about two decades ago. Uh, there's also an increasing number of oncologists. Uh, in the year 2022, there's uh, data that indicates that we had over 100 oncologists in the country, and 60 of these oncologists were clinical oncologists. Uh, that was uh, almost 10 times greater than an earlier study that had indicated that we only had six oncologists. So it means that someone uh, diagnosed with cancer is more likely to get care uh, in any part of the country because they are, there is an increasing number of oncologists. And then we also have increasing number of survivors coming out boldly to share their experiences. Amen? You know, uh, cancer is, can, can be sometimes really devastating and if you don't find someone who has had the experience of it, telling you that, okay, this is what I went through, and this is how it went, and this is what I did, this is what you can do, then uh, uh, someone might really be discouraged. But nowadays, we have so many of the survivors coming out, and just to mention a few of them who have been in the public domain, uh, I, I know Sidney Chahonyo, who is the founder of Hope for Cancer Kids. He's a guy who, who was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 19, and is now... Uh, a husband, a father, and uh, a Kenyan who is also uh, inspiring hope among uh, many people. We also have Mudoni Mete, who is the founder of Cancer Cafe. When my notes will be shared with you, you'll find links to these uh, uh, sites where you can also uh, refer. There's also a, a Malawian, who is also called uh, Mr. Ngombe, who is also a uh, founder of Cancer Survivors Quest, just to mention a few people. Uh, in the same breath, uh, caregivers are also coming out to share their experiences. As we had mentioned before, cancer affects everyone. Yeah? When uh, there's someone diagnosed with cancer, it's not just the individual affected, but also the family members, their spouses, their children, and all, all of that. Uh, and some of the caregivers are also coming out boldly to share their experiences to encourage other caregivers. There's a time uh, I met one of the caregivers who intimated that at one point she got so much devastated that she left the patient in the hospital and just disappeared because she couldn't bear it anymore. But now we have more of them coming out to encourage others. Uh, there's a friend called uh, Jared who featured in The Nation uh, some two weeks ago 
speaking about his experience. Uh, and also I want to acknowledge someone called Rita Anindo, who is the founder of Community Voices Network, who is making great impact. The other good news is that there are several clinical trials uh, happening in Africa, amen? Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned before, I work at the International Cancer Institute as hematoncological uh, clinical research pharmacist. And uh, there we have four clinical uh, trials uh, on breast cancer. And uh, the good news about having clinical trials in our setting is that we get to, to ensure that the medicines that are, uh, now, uh, that are developed and released into the market to treat this disease are effective in our population because we recognize that people have unique uh, genetic makeups and we, we recognize that the races are not just uh, about color but there's also a molecular uh, basis of the race that confers certain disparities when we, we, do, we use medicines without having proper data uh, with the local uh, race. So uh, you can contact ICI on uh, number, this number, 0754, no, 0768, 616, 668, but you will refer when my notes will be shared with you. Also, the standardization of care across the country. Uh, the National Cancer Control Program is doing a great job together with the National Cancer uh, Institute of Kenya uh, to advise on uh, treatment guidelines that makes sure that if you are treated of cancer at, uh, in Kisumu, uh, the same treatment guideline would apply in Nairobi such that the outcomes are also likely to be the same. Then there's also increasing recognition of palliative care in survivorship. So uh, palliative care is often seen as something that is done when there's nothing else that can be done. Now I want us to unlearn that and now learn the new thing about palliative care. It should begin at diagnosis and proceed throughout the continuum of the disease and through the, treat, throughout the treatment uh, progression. So uh, some gaps that still exist are lack of adequate preparation of, uh, among the countries. Then also the slow uptake of preventive measures. For example, uh, UNICEF data of 2022 indicate that uh, uptake of HPV vaccine in Kenya was just 26% that year, and uh, that is a, a major gap that we still have. Then there's late diagnosis. 7 to 80% of cases are diagnosed at advanced stages. So we still don't have sufficient number of specialists. So uh, to medics in the house, I would encourage you to also, if you have passion for that field, I would encourage you to venture into it so that we can uh, have, have a critical mass of oncology specialists. Then there's also uh, some myths and misconceptions that are still held. Uh, in the final limb of this presentation, let me share with you what we can do to close the cancer care gap. So cancer care, closing the cancer care gap entails the whole of society approach. And according to sociologists, the society consists of three layers. That is the macro, the micro, and the meso layers. So the micro uh, layer is the layer that consists of individuals like you and me, plus our families. And uh, while uh, the government at the macro level has done quite some, some job and is continuing to unveil uh, various programs, uh, we need to make efforts to ensure that we meet the government halfway so that we can realize that 30 to 50 percent of, of the cancers are preventable. So number one, uh, I, I will only share with you the high yield activities that we can all do to bridge the gap. Number one is to cease cigarette smoking, okay? Cigarette smoke contributes to over 20 percent of all cancers. And on that note, I want to share with you also the effect of passive smoke. Uh, if you know someone who smokes, you would advise them to. Uh, after smoking, let them not get in, back into the house immediately so that the smoke can also, uh, you know, when someone smokes, there's the smoke in their environment that when they get back into the house, studies have shown that there's 24% of exposure to those who are not smoking. 
Number two, quit alcohol uh, intake or minimize your intake. Because alcohol contributes, uh, increases risk of cancer by five times, and especially cancers of the throat, esophagus, breast, liver, and colon. Also eliminate cancer-causing chemicals in your environment, and I want to mention smoke or soot, uh, aflatoxins, and uh, arsenic. Some of these things, the government is doing a great job to ensure that they are not in our environments through NEMA and other agencies that are controlling uh, such exposures. Also prevent ex ex uh, infection by uh, going for vaccination. Amen? There's vaccination for hepatitis B and C. There's also vaccination, vaccination against HPV. Uh, and HPV vaccination is indicated for uh, ladies, uh, from the age of 15, who have not uh, had uh, sexual debut. So, uh, but from that age, or those who have had uh, sexual contact should go for screening. And uh, screening for cervical cancer is indicated every five years. Also, one thing that we have always been told is to avoid sedentary lifestyle. Amen? For us who live in the city, we might be tempted to not do any ex exercise, but let us try to do exercise regularly. And also, in terms of diet, let us incorporate fruits uh, much more in our diet because these fruits contain uh, vitamins that are antioxidants. Uh, with that, those very few remarks, uh, I would like to wish you a happy Sabbath. And uh, as you plan to uh, engage in efforts that bridge the cancer care gap, may the Lord bless you. Thank you so much.